welcome to the stage, Sarah Milliken. Thank you very much. Oh, so great to see you all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. How the fuck are you? Are you well? Yes. Give me a cheer if you're on the top level. Yes. It's a pretty good middle level. Yes. Downstairs. Yes. We're all here, let's get fucking cracking. <laughs> I always like to start every show by letting you know what time we'll finish. <laughs> I don't know if you're like me. I suspect some of you are. But every time I go anywhere or do anything, I want to know what time will it end. <laughs> I'm always planning on having a lovely time, but I also want to know what time I can take my fucking bra off. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll finish probably about 10.30, have your bra off by what, 10.35, is that all right? Yes. Just to clarify, I do not mind if you take your bra off during the show. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, it's just more clapping for me. <laughs> oh. Quite a lot of you have started early. <laughs> Thank you very much for the clapping and the tune when I came out. Much appreciated. I love that. I need that. So fucking needy. <laughs> also, there was a bit of wooing. I love the wooing. It's a certain kind of person. When lights go out, they just can't fucking help themselves. Ooh, something's happening. <laughs> Which is lovely for me, but what I want to know is how do those people go to bed? <laughs> do you think they turn their bedside lamp off and they're like, ooh, something's happening! <laughs> and their partner's like, it's Monday night, nothing's fucking happening. <laughs> I am. Uh, are we drinking tonight? Are you drinking? Yes. Some of you are, some of you aren't. Uh, fair enough. I've got a friend who drinks quite a lot. That already sounds quite judgy, doesn't it? I don't mean it to. She's one of those people. You know those people who say things like, it's seven o'clock somewhere? You know those people? <laughs> and I have to go, yeah, Brenda, but it's still fucking noon here. <laughs> but I can't be so judgy with her anymore because I'm the same with cake. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I have a slice of cake, I always think, well, it's somebody's birthday. <laughs> and it is always somebody's birthday. Only the other day I had a slice of lemon drizzle cake and I sang, Happy birthday, dear Enya. <laughs> You're very lucky though, a few months ago I was in Worthen on the south coast and I had to sing, Happy birthday, Myra Hindley. Ooh! <laughs> she was the only famous person who had a birthday that day, shit! <laughs> so to avoid that, I'm now on a mailing list. I get an email every day let me know which famous birthdays are happening that day. When it first came through, I scrolled back to the end of May when it's my birthday. I thought I'll have a look, see if I'm on the list. I'm not on the list. I'm not famous enough to be on the list, cheeky fuckers. I mean, Enya, fair enough, but put me ahead of Myra fucking Hindley, Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, the venue asked me to read something aloud to you at the very start of the show, and I totally forgot, so let's do that now. Obviously, we live in a slightly different world now, as we all know, uh, so let's just read this, get it out of the way, and then we can crack on with the jokes. So this is from the venue. Warning. <laughs> This show contains moderate swear and sexual references and some upsetting scenes. <laughs> That's a great response. That's why we came. <laughs> I've noticed fairly recently that some compliments are shit. So compliments are supposed to make you feel nice, right? Some of them start really well and then partway through they just fucking turn on you. I'll give you an example. A friend of mine said, I like your hair. And I was all ready to say, oh, thanks very much. And she said, like that. What the fuck does that bit mean? <laughs> so you thought it looked shit yesterday, bitch. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> all I'm suggesting is that we start shortening our compliments. Next time you're paying somebody a compliment, if partway through they're smiling, back the fuck away, you've done your job. <laughs> You get two examples, you could say, you look great, and don't bother adding on the end, for your age. <laughs> or you could say, that feels amazing, and don't bother adding on the end, considering the lack of girth. <laughs> it's one of the reasons I named my show Bobby Dazzler. I should explain, though, when I first named my show Bobby Dazzler, I genuinely thought it was a universally understood term. It is fucking not. <laughs> I 
Biden show in Iceland. In Iceland. Yes, the country. Who said that? The country. Yes, the fucking country. <laughs> Didn't even shout it out. Just sort of whispered it to your friend. The country. Yes, the fucking country. <laughs> you know, she did two nights in Dartford and then just a freezer shop the next day. It was really weird. <laughs> did a show in Reykjavik in Iceland and 100% of the audience thought Bobby Dazzler was the name of my support act. <laughs> when I brought somebody else out, they were all like, oh, Bobby must have COVID. <laughs> But if you don't know the term Bobby Dazzler, it's a really pure compliment. It's lovely, yeah. It, if somebody calls you one, it just means you look excellent or you are excellent. That's it. Also, I don't think there are many compliments that can equally describe a child in new wellies who's a Bobby Dazzler <laughs> and a brand new erection. Now that is a Bobby Dazzler. <laughs> boy, oi, oi, oi. <laughs> boy, oi, oi, oi. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Some of you might have noticed I've got new glasses. I went to the optician. I went to the little room with the lady on the computer. She brought my record up on the screen. She said, can I ask you a question? I said, yes, of course. She said, have you been going somewhere else? And I thought, I've never been accused of cheating on me optician before. <laughs> I said, no, why? She said, I haven't had your eyes tested since 2012. It's quite a long time ago, which surprised me. I've been wearing glasses since I was six years old. Give me a woo if you also wear glasses. <laughs> Loads of it. Maybe some of you are like me. I normally love an eye test because to me it's a fun quiz and then I can see again. Like, what's not to like? <laughs> but I always forget the bit they do at the beginning. You know, sort of health check that they do now where they kind of blow on your eyes. <laughs> well, it's the machine. It's not the lady, is it? That we. <laughs> Creepy as fuck if she just leant in and went. <laughs> she said, Good news, your eyes are in perfect health. I said, Good, I'm glad something is, because I'm 47 and things are starting to sort of hang and unravel and dribble a bit. <laughs> it's one of the reasons I've got leggings on tonight. <laughs> Very absorbent. My advice to the front row is just breathe with your mouths tonight. That's my advice. No sniffy, sniffy, all mouthy, mouthy. But then we got onto the actual eyes test itself, and she did the bit, you know what they say, is it clearer now? And now? And now? And now? I don't think they tell them at optician school that like 90% of their future job is going to be finding fancier ways of saying and now. And now? And now? And oh! That one's too far. <laughs> then she did the bit with the circles. You remember this bit where they say the circle's darker on the red or on the green or on the green or on the red? Then she said, I want you to read that bottom line. I said, not a problem. I looked at it. It was very small. I said, it might be a bit of guesswork. She said, that's all right. Just try your best. So I studied it and I went, J? And then I looked at her face to see if I was nailing it because you do that, don't you? She was very professional. I could not tell. I went back to a J. And then I went, B? And she said, can I just stop you there? They're numbers. <laughs> but I explained to her that my husband was also in having an eye test. He'd gone in five minutes ahead of me with a different optician, obviously. I said, I think he's probably done by now. She said, oh, he's definitely done by now. I said, why did you say it like that? She said, we've been in here a really long time. <laughs> I said, why? She said, well, if you came a bit more often, I wouldn't have so much to tell you. All right, arsy cow. <laughs> so I came out and my husband was there waiting for ages, sure enough, all done. And we worked out it was eight years since his last appointment and nine for me, so he wasn't much better than I was. I said, what did they say about your eyes? What was the verdict? He said, oh, they said they're pretty much the same. In fact, if anything, they might be a bit better. Fucking better. Fucking better. <laughs> Whose eyes improve with age? It's not fucking Wolverine. But this is exactly the same when we go to the dentist, because he's got really good teeth, never needs anything doing. Sometimes he'll do a scrape and polish so you feel like he's joining in on the experience. I have terrible teeth. Whenever I go to the dentist, I ask, how many fillings do I need? Because it's always at least one. I have, and I don't think this is common, a loyalty card at the dentist. <laughs> I can tell from your response, it's not common at all, is it? It's a little bit of cardboard, it's got all my teeth drawn on. Every time I get a fill-in, they colour another one in. 
And when it's full, I get diabetes. <laughs> the last time my husband had a scrape and polish, he went to pay afterwards, and the lady said, no, no, you can have this one free of charge because your wife is such a good customer. <laughs> His eyes are improving, his teeth are always fine. I've got a horrible feeling that we're turning into Richard and Judy. <laughs> it's harsh, but you know what I mean, don't you? <laughs> I don't think Judy Finnegan is aging badly. I think she's aging normally. He, I think, is drinking the blood of a virgin. <laughs> the reason she looks like she does is because she's got to deal with his shit every fucking day. <laughs> Every time he opens his mouth to talk, we all cringe, don't we? What's he going to say? She's just glad he's not going down on her. <laughs> There's an image for you all to take home. You're welcome. <laughs> well, my husband said, that's what they said about my eyes. What did they say about your eyes? I said, oh, I need different pairs of glasses for so many different things. I've got drivers. I've got readers. These are the ones I have to wear if I want to eat a Twix. <laughs> These are the ones I wear if I'm meeting a friend. But if I see her ahead of time, or I give a little wave across the street, it's different fucking glasses. <laughs> I'm going to have so many chains around my neck, I'm going to look like Mr. Fucking T. <laughs> Give me a word if you came here tonight with a family member. <laughs> and if you came with a friend. <laughs> There's not as many with friends, but you're more enthusiastic. That's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> the people who came with a friend, is anybody in a really long friendship? Give me a wave if you want. We've got people here. All right, at the front. How long have you two been friends? 15 years, thank you for that. There was a lady the other day, she had out 45 years. I said, wow, where did you meet? And she went, at birth. <laughs> so it's not your fucking mum, is it? <laughs> I hate people are like that. My mum's my best friend. <laughs> yeah, you're not hers. <laughs> she wants you to move out. Well done to all of the long friendships in the room. I'm very impressed by you. I'm also a little bit jealous of you. I have friends from comedy, friends from other jobs that I've had. I don't have any friends from school. Uh, you wouldn't think you'd know why, but I know exactly why. When I was a kid and my birthday rolled around, my mum would say, would you like a party? Now, I have to remember that kids' parties, when I was a child, very different to kids' parties. Now, for example, I have a friend who has an eight-year-old daughter. For her last birthday party, they hired somebody to do manicures and also a hot tub. So what the fuck are you doing? You're not Kardashians. <laughs> but if you've got little ones now, maybe this is the kind of elaborate party that you have to put on. Maybe you hire a higher venue. Maybe somebody does the catering. Maybe a man you don't know comes in in a weird outfit and plays with your children for money. <laughs> you can call him a clown if you like, but my description is still valid. <laughs> Come on in, kids. Pedo the clown has arrived. <laughs> Pretty sure he's all right, but don't sniff his flower just in case. <laughs> At least you would know if he was getting any of the kids to touch him in the wrong area, because it makes this sound. <laughs> I fully expect at some point on this tour to start getting really angry emails from clowns, <laughs> which I will then forward on to the police. I found another one for you. You're welcome. <laughs> Did a show in Antwerp a while back, in Antwerp in Belgium, and just after I honked, a man on the front row, really quiet, really sinister looking, just went, do it again. <laughs> so for him and for you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is not the kind of party that was on offer to me, though, when I was a child. Let's gauge your age in the room. Give me a woo if you're under 40. <laughs> 40 and above? <laughs> There's a lot more of us. We can take them, can't we? <laughs> that was an offer to me in the 70s and the 80s would be this. Uh, six friends maximum. <laughs> that's the sort of amount I would have struggled to fill at that age. Somebody would have to bring their cousin just to make up the numbers. <laughs> in your house, wasn't it always in your house and your mum or a mum, someone's mum would prepare the food. And by that I mean they would cut it all into cubes. <laughs> so it could take part in the hedgehog. <laughs> Anything that wasn't cut into cubes was cut on an angle, so you know you're at a party. That's how you know. <laughs> I don't know if you know, but this works as an adult as well. If you're ever at somebody's house and you're like, is it a party? Is it not a party? Look at the food. Is it cut on an angle? You're at a fucking party. Are <laughs> the biscuits fanned out on a plate? <laughs> you're at a fucking party. You don't do that for yourself, do you? You don't sit down in front of Bake Off with a packet of pink wafers in your best plate. <laughs> no. 
you put the full packet in, pull out the wrapper. <laughs> there also be party games, wouldn't there be party games? One of your toys would be wrapped up several times and passed around until some other fucker takes it home. <laughs> Someone would piss themselves, wouldn't they, always? <laughs> Usually the same child at every party. And you'd all go home with a little bag of crap. That's a kid's party, isn't it? The 70s and the 80s right there. The other option, uh, if I didn't want a party, would be this. So I'm from a place called South Shields. South Shields is near Newcastle. And in Newcastle is a department store called Fenix, quite a fancy department store. And I had the option, if I wanted to, instead of a party, to go to Fenix for the day with my mum, just the two of us. We go to the restaurant, which was not fancy. Any restaurant that starts with your own tray is not fancy. <laughs> And I could choose anything I liked off the menu, which every single time I went was always the same thing. All I ever wanted was chips in a bowl. That's all I ever wanted. Because to me, the height of luxury was being able to have nothing else with your chips but other fucking chips. <laughs> then we'd go to the toy department, I'd pick a toy, and we'd go home. Every single birthday I had as a child was spent in Phoenix. I never said yes to a party. I chose Phoenix over friends. Some would say chips over friends. <laughs> Still sort of doing it now, and I regret not a fucking thing. <laughs> but every time I was invited to somebody else's birthday party as a kid, I always went. It's rude, really, isn't it, to go to those parties, never have one of your own. I'd go to the party, I'd eat the cubed food, I'd win a prize, piss myself. <laughs> I'd go home with a little bag of crap and an adult man's mobile number. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody find in the last few years we've been dealing with all the COVID shite? Anybody find that every now and again they felt like they were going a little bit mad? Yeah. Yes. So overwhelmed is probably a better word. I'd feel a bit overwhelmed and I'd do a thing that I thought would help. Let me tell you a few of the things I tried. First thing I tried, I bought some seeds. Do you remember there was a while back there when food was so scarce we all thought we were going to have to grow it all ourselves? <laughs> I bought some seeds, my friend quite rightly pointed out that seeds only really grow fruit and vegetables. I thought, what fucking use is that to me? <laughs> Where are the seeds for the Twixes and the toilet rolls and the microwave dinners? That's what I need. Does anybody want to hazard a guess how many seeds I actually planted? No. None, thank you, none. <laughs> There's a man the other day shouted out two, which has got to be the weirdest suggestion of all. <laughs> Sounds like I just tripped when I got out the car and a couple accidentally landed in the ground. Another thing I tried, tried a bit of a yoga. Does anybody do yoga? Yeah. Well, they even sound quite relaxed when they're answering the question, don't they? Yes, <laughs> I do yoga. I'm bendy as fuck. I tried a bit of yoga, watched a lady on YouTube. Had to turn the volume up really loud, though, because I couldn't hear what she was telling me to do over all of the clicking of my joints. <laughs> And initially, I thought, is this going to be harder for me because I'm fat and the woman in the video is wafer thin and tiny? Is this going to be harder for me? And then after a while, I realised, if anything, I had a slight unfair advantage. For example, when she said, pull in your lower belly, I thought, I'm glad she knows I've got two. <laughs> I found a way to make planking a lot easier. Do it naked. Tits and belly hit the floor. A lot less to hold up. Pretty much every time she said chin to chest, I was sort of already doing it. <laughs> how is that a fucking exercise? <laughs> That's how I read. <laughs> Another thing I tried. Give me a woo if you've heard of the Couch to 5K app. A lot of you. For those of you who haven't, let me tell you what it is. It's an app to get you running, a BBC app. The idea is you start as a beginner, and by the end you should be able to run five kilometres. And the whole way through, you have somebody in your ear talking you through it, telling you when to run, when to walk, offer any kind of support and encouragement. And of those people, there's quite a few people you can choose from. One of them is Olympic gold medalist Michael Johnson. And another one is me. How the fuck did that happen? <laughs> I was first asked to do it a long time ago now. They were very nice to me. They said, you've got a really friendly voice. We thought you'd be great for this. That's what they said. What I think they meant was, you look like people who don't run. <laughs> when I recorded it, I said, can I mix it up? Can I change it around? Can I put my own words in? They said, no, no, it's BBC. It's health. It's very important. You just stick with what's written. All I was allowed to do is put in some well-done flowers and well-done pets. That's all I was allowed. All I really want to do on the bit where it says, and now have a snack such as a banana. Really quietly underneath, I just wanted to go, muffin. <laughs> 
so that you knew it was definitely me. <laughs> and in case we were worried, I was safe. It's good to know that, it's good to know. But pretty much every day, somebody on social media will send me a message saying they've started it, or they finished it, or they're in the middle of it, and they never thought they could run, and now they can run, and they love it. And on one of my overwhelmed days, I thought, if it's working for all of those people, maybe I should be giving it a go. <laughs> and then I thought, should I use my own voice? <laughs> I couldn't work out if I'd find it inspirational or really fucking irritating. <laughs> And the truth is both. Some days it would say things like, you're doing really well, I'm really proud of you. And I'd be like, I am doing really well. Thanks for being proud of me, past me, sitting on a sofa eating a fucking biscuit. <laughs> then other days it would say, well, if that went well, why don't you run a bit faster? And I would say, why don't you fuck the fuck off? <laughs> but my husband said, isn't it hard? He prefers to do weights, doesn't like to, to run. He said, isn't it hard? Because I did do it, I completed the whole thing, and I used my own voice like an absolute bell end. <laughs> I said, of course it's hard, it's running. I said, haven't we all done loads of hard things over the last few years we never thought we'd have to do? And I came up with something that sounds like a catchphrase. I don't know where it came from, but I like it, and I'm keeping it. I said, of course it's hard, because if it was easy, it'd be biscuits. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> like, I might have read it on a T-shirt. But I would like to talk to you guys to see if anybody in this beautiful room of glorious people would like to shout out something that you did in what I'm calling a moment of madness in the last few years. We'll section you off to make it slightly easier. Let me give you an example. There was a man a few months ago. I said, what did you do in a moment of madness in the last few years? He said he'd bought a butter churn. <laughs> and I love the sheer panic he clearly had. What if we run out of butter? <laughs> I asked him how many times he'd used it. He said, just the once, because it turns out it makes a fuckload of butter. <laughs> I think the easiest way to talk to you guys is in the sections you're sort of already in. So we'll start at the top, we'll work our way down the room. So that lovely upstairs section. Anybody in that upstairs section want to shout out something you did in a moment of madness in the last few years? Anybody want to start us off? Got engaged. OK, we'll come back to this one. Hold. Well, there's so much to talk about. <laughs> Quite a lot to unpack. Lady over here, shout out again. Had a baby. You had a baby. Is it your first baby? Yeah. Yeah, is it also your last baby? Yes, of course. <laughs> Somebody else answered. That's my aunt. It's who? My aunt. <laughs> your aunt, is your aunt, does your aunt do a lot of babysitting by any chance? <laughs> she does indeed, she lives up the road. She lives up the road. <laughs> who moved into the street first though? I did. <laughs> She's proper arsy, isn't she? I love it. And then she was like, I'm pregnant. I'm going to move in near my aunt. <laughs> this is genius. Uh, what did you have, a girl or a boy? Baby boy. A baby boy. Never mind. You can try again for the proper ones. Um, <laughs> oh, it's fine. Girls are better. It's just a fact. And did you have your baby during the time when it was really scary in the hospitals, my love? It's always scary having a baby. <laughs> is it? <laughs> I've had some terrifying shits in my time. <laughs> I really have. I had one once, while we're sharing, <laughs> where I felt like it was kind of like giving birth, because there was a really wide bit of it, and I was like, oh, I've got the shoulders past, we're all right. <laughs> Appreciate it is always scary. Round of applause for the lady with the new baby. <laughs> Lovely. We had somebody else over this side. Shout out again. Got engaged. How long had you been with your partner before the proposal? Uh, four years. Four years? Yeah. Oh, one woman went. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of you are like, seems fair enough. Just one woman really spoke for the group, didn't she? <laughs> yeah, it's reasonable. To who? He proposed to me. Is this him beside you there? Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> Hold on. Did you say yes, look at him, and then say no? Is that what happened there? Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> who is this beside you? Jason. Jason? <laughs> well, who, who is he to you? Fiance. Oh, you was with it, you? No. So, Jason, you proposed, 
to your good lady was it a very romantic proposal, my love? Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. And she went, no. Can you tell me where it happened? What happened? I slapped him round the face. You slapped him round the face before or after the proposal? Is that what inspired it? Is he into that sort of dirty shit, is he? Just a really good crack and he was like, fucking hell, marry me. That was amazing. Now do me ball bag. Oh. He's not. I'm just taking the piss. <laughs> and have you got kids? Have you got animals? What's the situation at home? We've got kids, but not with each other. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> kids, but not with each other. Well, not if you keep slapping his ball back. He's got no fucking chance, has he? Just be empty and dry in there. <laughs> Round of applause for the happy couple. <laughs> We had somebody else upstairs. Do you want to shout out again? Uh, a lightsaber. It was a uh, nerd sort of impulse buy. A nerd impulse buy? <laughs> well, you've got your reasons already ready, haven't you? Just <laughs> Why don't you think... You think I would think it was a bad thing? It sounds fucking awesome. <laughs> now, it's not a real one, though. No, no. 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 So <laughs> what, what happens when you press... It can't shoot out. But what? Stop it. Somebody's laughing over there behind me. It's, uh, it's, what? Three, it's 3D printed. It's 3D printed? <laughs> no offence, mate, but it sounds shit. <laughs> Does it turn on, then? I don't really understand anything about 3D printers. Does it turn on? It's more of a display piece. More of a display piece? <laughs> We're picturing your flat now, aren't we? <laughs> Have, have you got anything else on display? Um, I don't know, ask her. <laughs> ask her? I mean, we're all surprised you've got a girlfriend. <laughs> Actually, I can't see it. It might be his mum. That would make more sense, wouldn't it? Uh, <laughs> I love that you bought yourself a lightsaber. Well fucking done. Round of applause for the Star Wars fan. Upstairs, middle section. Anybody want to shout at something you did in a moment of madness? Got a hot tub. Oh, you saved the confidence. A couple of people upstairs, all of a sudden, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> Was somebody over here shout it again? Got a hot tub. You got a hot tub? Yeah. Yeah. Did you? Uh, so, how many people does it sit? Four. Four. You know that, don't you? As well, you've had <laughs> friends round. <laughs> oh no, just the neighbours. <laughs> I got it from Middle. I went in for milk. You should be on the advert for Lidl. <laughs> then come in for milk, go home with, you know, somewhere to have sex with your neighbours. <laughs> Is this your partner? Single. You're single. <laughs> He's definitely had people in that hot tub, hasn't he? <laughs> Did you sometimes sit in it on your own? Do you know what all my friends get in it? I don't. I <laughs> mm. <laughs> don't believe him, do we? No. I've got a, I've got a question for you. I don't know, I genuinely don't know the answer to this. Um, <sighs> in a hot tub, maybe everybody else can answer. I suspect you know, but maybe other people know as well. In a hot tub, does jizz, like, mix in? <laughs> I don't know. Does it mix in? Or does it go, like, stringy, like uh, goldfish poos? <laughs> you know, like, go in with a little, like, a tiddly net and just try and catch it. you would say, it gets claggy. <laughs> it gets claggy. I love that you know, and you're acknowledging that you know. Well, I hope you meet somebody very soon you can sit in your hot tub with. Round of applause for the lovely fella. Thank you. Anybody else in the middle section shout out something you did in a moment of madness? 
Hello, Sarah. Hello. <laughs> Are we just having a chat, or have you got an answer to the fucking question, Flower? No, what? Uh, no. Every day during lockdown, I try to have a two-pound poo. <laughs> During lockdown, you tried to have a two pound poo. What I want to know is who was paying your flower? <laughs> are you weighing them? Are you photographing them? No, I just stand there naked, weigh myself. Oh no, no, you really mean it. <laughs> you understand, you all got that, didn't you, from him? That he would weigh himself naked, do a shit, <laughs> weigh himself naked again. Did you have a chart on the kitchen wall? <laughs> Get a little star, a little brown star. Was it a brown star? <laughs> brown star stickers are quite hard to come by. <laughs> Is this your wife beside you who looks appalled? <laughs> Over here? Very this... interesting. Say that again. This is Ruth. She loved me telling her every morning that I failed. <laughs> you can't all see her, but she's like this. <laughs> I managed her two weeks ago. You married her two weeks ago? No, I managed a two pound poo. Oh, you managed a two pound <laughs> Two people cheered and they were definitely men. They're like, got a new project, I've got a new project. Well, I'm very proud of you. Congratulations on your new hobby flower. Round of applause for the poo wear. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody downstairs want to shout out something you did in a moment of madness? I left my husband. <laughs> you left your husband? <laughs> How long had you been married, my lovely? 25 years. 20... Oh! <laughs> it's gone a bit panto in here, hasn't it? Five years, that's incredible. Are you officially divorced? Have you been through your absolute and all of that? Yeah, January. That's January? Right. Fucking, it's going to be a good fucking day, isn't it? <laughs> so you left him? I did. Yes, and do you, so do, is he still in the house that you were in together? He is. Yeah, and, and have you got yourself like a oh, fancy lady pad? I'm all over it. I've got You're, I'm all over it. <laughs> <laughs> you got a sexy pad, have you? I don't mean... <laughs> We're sort of that age, uh, <laughs> you and I. And congratulations. And I don't know, like, I'm divorced and then remarried. I don't know if you all know. Uh, everybody, if we've all had breakups and, you know, especially significant relationships. Uh, I don't know if you've been through this phase yet. I feel like you might have done. There's a phase you go through when you get divorced or you end a relationship. There's a phase you go through where you can't sleep. And what you do, this is a tip if anybody's getting there or they're about to dump somebody significant, maybe who's sitting beside them tonight. What a great day. <laughs> So Tim, if you can't sleep, what you do is you have a big cry, you have a wank, you have a magnum, you go back to bed, sleep like a baby. <laughs> I choose to keep the wank and the magnum separate, but it's up to you. <laughs> I don't know. It's up to you. Well, congratulations and have a great day on your absolute day. Round of applause for the fantastic lady. Good answers. Very good answers tonight. Let me tell you a couple of my favourite ones. There was a lady in Birmingham. I said, what do you do in a moment of madness? She said, my lodger. <laughs> and by way of explanation, she went, well, he's Greek. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Fair enough. I said, do you still live with him now? She said, yes. I said, are you in a relationship with him? She said, no, no. I said, well, well done you. You've had this fling. You've got past it. You've been such adults about it. She said, oh, no, it's still going on. <laughs> I said, did he cut his rent a bit? She said, actually, no, I put it up. <laughs> Another one I liked was in Liverpool. Uh, a lady said, I said, what do you do in a moment of madness? She said, I've started drinking wine out of a mug. <laughs> Which didn't sound that mad to me, but then she said, no, no, during important work meetings on Zoom. <laughs> she said, the trick is, you get the bit of string in the paper off a herbal tea bag and you drape it over the side of your mug. <laughs> She's a fucking genius, is what she is. <laughs>
One of the things I dabbled in a little bit in lockdown was aromatherapy. I've never really bothered with aromatherapy in the past because I have actual therapy. You don't need aroma or something if you're having the real fucking thing. If I fancy something sweet, I don't have an aroma twix, do I? No. <laughs> if I'm tired but I can't sleep, I don't have an aroma wank, do I? No. <laughs> I bought myself some aromatherapy balms. If you don't want the oil, you just put them on your pulse points. They're supposed to make you feel nice. And the four that I bought all had names. They were called Sleepy Time, like I'm five. <laughs> Calm down, all right. <laughs> Wake up, make your fucking mind up. And headache, a bit more medical. And the awesome of things you'd expect them to smell of, lavender, chamomile, that sort of thing. I thought it'd be interesting to get my husband to smell them, to tell me what he thought they smelt of. To be fair, I did once ask him to smell my vagina candle, and he said it smelled of beef and cheese, and he got it right first time. <laughs> of sleepy time, calm down, wake up, headache. He said this smelt of creosote, grass, nothing, and an old shop. He's got no fucking clue. I don't know why we bother with these things, though, because we've got lavender in the garden. So what I do now before I go to bed, I just nip out into the garden in my nighty, and I inhale a bush. <laughs> and then I get in the house, and my husband does the same. <laughs> beef and cheese, beef and cheese. <laughs> But you remember when the food shops were terrifying and we all started ordering food online? I downloaded all the different supermarket apps into my phone, try and get a delivery slot. Eventually I got one. I shouted to my husband who's in the kitchen. I shouted, I've got a slot. I've got a slot. Come and help me fill it. Used to mean something else. <laughs> and the slot that I got was on the Asda app and I started to add things to the basket, usual things, bread and milk and whatnot. When it came to the fruit though, the fruit was divided into different sections. There was an exotic fruit section. I thought, oh. Let's see what Asda's got by way of exotic fruit. And in there was a papaya. And I thought, yeah, there might be a global pandemic happening on Asda, but I will have a fucking papaya. <laughs> and when I added it to the basket, I half expected the Asda app to be like, ooh. Did you mean bird's eye potato waffles? <laughs> no, but thanks for the reminder. Also add to basket. Well, you know when you order food online, you don't always get what you want, do you? Sometimes you get substitutions. Asda didn't have any fucking papayas. They just sent me two pies, which was good enough. <laughs> but as well as the papayas, I also ordered kiwi fruit. I love a kiwi fruit. When I first met my husband, we hadn't started going out yet. We were just friends. I watched him eat a kiwi like an apple. <laughs> am, 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 fur and all. <laughs> and I looked at him and I thought, this bodes very well for me. <laughs> Let's see how he does with his coconut. <laughs> but we've lived in the house we live in now for about nine years. Before that, we both rented flats uh, separately. If you rent now, or you've ever rented in the past, you will know that if something breaks in your rented place, you tell the person responsible, who does nothing at all, and you learn to live without the thing. That's right, isn't it? When you own somewhere, though, you're responsible. My husband had this great idea when we first moved in together. I have like a role and jobs list to document on his computer of all the things that needed doing to the house. Some of those things we could do ourselves. Some of those things he would need to ring a bigger boy who would come and do it for us. And one day he shared the document with me. He said, just in case you want to add any jobs to the list. So I scrolled right to the bottom and I just wrote Cunnilingus. <laughs> and he spotted it. He said, yeah, yeah, as long as you don't mind a Polish handyman coming to do it. <laughs> And I said, not at all. <laughs> he said, to be fair, it's sort of already on the list. It's just under clearing the gutters. <laughs> 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 but I've been married a long time. Different men. Let's move on. And <laughs> thinking a little bit about relationships. I've got a theory. See if you agree with this. My theory is that most relationships are made up of one person who does chores as they see them arise and another person who needs to be asked to do chores. Would you agree with that? Yes. Yeah. So I'm the doer in our family. My husband will do anything I ask, but does often need to be asked. So I found a way around this. If this is helpful in your relationship, please use it. I do not mind. What I do is I make every chore a challenge. So I say to him, Betty Carr, I'm bringing all the shopping from the car in one go. <laughs> and he goes, of course I can. He does it, and I tick it off my list. Hooray! <laughs> I say, Betty can't empty the dishwasher in less than two minutes. And he goes, I bet I bloody can. I use a stopwatch to make it more fun for him, you know. <laughs> it's basically like a really domestic version of the crystal maze. <laughs> 
Well, I am Richard O'Brien, or Richard Iowardi, if you're very young, and my husband is in a big glass sphere. Also in the sphere is a washing machine and a tumble dryer. <laughs> Against the clock, to win another month of marriage, he has to take clothes out of the washing machine and deduce whether or not they can be tumble dried. <laughs> and it's not as straightforward as looking at the label, because nobody knows what the fucking symbols mean. <laughs> There's only one symbol we all know, and I think the reason it's universal is because it's so damn important, and that's the hand one. We all know the hand one, don't we? Because that means wave goodbye to your lovely top because it's about to get fucking shrunk. <laughs> <laughs> but I bought this dress, many reasons, but one of them is that it's got fucking pockets! <laughs> How you make a woman happy, isn't it? Show her something with pockets. This is what feminism is to me. Because I could be scratching my fanny now, you'd have no idea. <laughs> She's got dungarees and they've got pockets everywhere and she looks amazing in her dungarees and I'm so jealous and I keep thinking, should I get some dungarees? But she's a lot thinner than me and I've got a horrible feeling I just look fucking pregnant in them. And that's what I said to my husband. I said, I think the only way I could get away with dungarees is if I either I lost loads of weight, it's not going to happen, I can't be bothered, or I wait until I'm so old that I couldn't possibly be pregnant, which these days, because of fucking science, is about 70, isn't it? <laughs> Thanks, fucking science. My husband went, oh, and I thought, oh, he's got a good logical brain. He's thought of a third solution. He said, you could just wear the dungarees, but always carry a paintbrush with you. <laughs> I said, no, Milo, people just point and go, look at that fat old lady preparing the nursery for our unborn child. <laughs> We're heading on for my favourite time of the day, which is bedtime. Fucking love sleeping. <laughs> I don't, however, sleep naked. Give me a word if you do sleep naked. <laughs> and if you don't? <laughs> the main reason I don't sleep naked is we've got a cat who's an arsehole. <laughs> and if your toes are popping out the end of the duvet, he will nibble on them. Imagine what he'd do to me, Fanny. I'm not risking it. <laughs> not risking it. But a while ago, a friend of mine rang me one day laughing. She was heavily pregnant at the time. She rang me to tell me the hospital had been on the phone. And they said that when she came in to give birth, she was to bring a nightie. And she thought this was piss funny. She said, who even wears nighties these days? And I didn't say anything, but I wanted to say, me. <laughs> and then she said, where would you even get a nightie from these days? And that's when I snapped and said, Marks and Spencers, you fucking idiot. <laughs> They told her to bring a button down nighty, which makes sense for breastfeeding reasons. But I think that's just good advice for all of us, isn't it? If your partner can rummage in the top and then rummage underneath, you don't have to take the fucker off at all. <laughs> there are some health benefits to sleeping naked, let me tell you. There's three of them. Let me talk you through them. Number one, uh, keeps your temperature down. And I thought, well, sort of sticking a leg out. <laughs> Number two, improves self-esteem. That sounds like a load of shit, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't think it would improve my self-esteem if my husband rolled over to see me lying there with a chin full of tits. <laughs> At least in a nighty they're contained, aren't they? Instead, it looks like a carrier bag full of bread buns. <laughs> and number three keeps testicles cool. It's mostly for the men, that one, obviously. <laughs> now, I've met, met, I've met some testicles in my time. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I've never met a cool one. They've all got a degree of sort of tuckiness, haven't they? <laughs> like you're waiting for them to dry. <laughs> but I've got a nice tradition. I like to get new pyjamas for Christmas. Does anybody else do that? Yeah. yeah. So last November, I went around various department stores to have a look at what they had by way of new stock in the pyjama department. It wasn't great, if I'm honest. I would say half of them were fleecy. <laughs> That's the noise that women make when parts of them are hotter than the sun. <laughs> Nobody wants thrush for Santa coming, do they? No. The other half had slogans across here. I'm 47, fuck off with your slogans. I saw two slogans, one said, it's Prosecco o'clock, which I don't know if you know is not an actual time, it's just a fancy term for alcoholism. And the other one said, there's always time for brunch. And there's not, is there, sometimes it's just you and some Weetabix and it's pretty fucking sad. <laughs> 
I thought, if they want slogans, why don't they have realistic slogans? So I had a think, and I've come up with three ideas. I am going to pitch them to the department stores, but I wanted to run them by you first. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Three realistic slogans for pyjama tops. Here we go. Number one, don't come too close. I've worn these as clothes for four days. <laughs> Number two, that's not a pattern, it's tomato soup. <laughs> and number three, if I'm honest, the top smells better than the bottoms. <laughs> I will pitch them to the department stores and I'll let you know how I get on. <laughs> person by nature. I've fallen over substantially three times in the last few years. First time I fell over, I hurt my knee. Now, a problem that exists when you are not skinny is trying to convince someone that a part of you is swollen. <laughs> I said to my friend, I said, look at my knee. Look, I heard it. It's all swollen. She said, is it? <laughs> and then she said, did you fall on your other knee as well? Fuck off. <laughs> Second time I fell, I fell face front. Now, if you've ever fallen face front, you'll know there's a degree of slow motion about a fall like that. It's a little bit, no. The whole time, all I could think of was, don't smash your glasses, don't smash your glasses. <laughs> glasses are fucking expensive. Miraculously, even though I fell face front, I did not smash my glasses, and that's because I was saved by my tits. <laughs> My husband, who saw it happen, said I was lying there with my hands slightly up, my feet slightly up. He said it looked a little bit like you were skydiving. <laughs> Third time I fell, I hurt my wrist and my hand. It didn't heal itself properly, so I had to go and see a physiotherapist. And the physiotherapist said to me, can you tell me what activities you're doing when it hurts the most? <laughs> no. He's a medical professional. I have to tell the truth to medical professionals. So I did tell the truth in the end, and I said, mashing potatoes and wanking. <laughs> it's the same motion, isn't it? <laughs> it's the same face. therapist said I'm going to give you an exercise to do he said you won't believe me but I promise it works but you won't believe me I said what's the exercise he said doing the dishes and I said what kind of handmaid's tale bullshit is this <laughs> there was a curtain in his room he could get changed behind I lifted it up fully expect to see my husband just crouch down whispering dishes tell her dishes <laughs> and hand jobs <laughs> I'm not going to do the dishes and deprive my husband of winning a crystal are you mad <laughs> Give me a woo if you've heard of the term, the seven signs of ageing. Oh, there's quite a lot of you. For those of you who haven't, let me tell you what they are. The seven signs of ageing are this. Dark spots, wrinkles, saggy skin, dry skin, dull skin, and visible pores. And the reason they're all skin related is because this is what we're told by skincare companies. This is not what my seven signs of ageing are. I've written them down for you. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is my seven signs of age. Number one, you have more baths than showers. Most because you've got more time, but also because sometimes things need a steep. <laughs> Number two, the menopause, which mostly affects women, but can affect some men who live with the women who are going through the menopause. And to those men, I say, boo fucking who. <laughs> One thing you might not know is that before the menopause is something called the perimenopause, and before that is the peri-perimenopause, where you still get the hot sweats, but they smell of lemon and herb. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you are pretending you're too posh for a Nando's joke, <laughs> which is hilarious given where we are. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Number three, your neck. People look at your neck a lot more after you hit 40. My neck is fine, thanks very much. All I have, and it's nothing medical, it's nothing to worry about, is a line that goes across it from left to right. What it looks like, it looks like I was beheaded a long time ago, <laughs> and it's healing really well. The only trouble I ever get from my neck is that every now and again, that line needs a little dust. <laughs> Number four, piles. Give us a cheer. No, don't, don't. <laughs> I occasionally suffer from piles. How I know they're bad is that my farts sound different. <laughs> Number five, you need a weekly tablet box. Give me a woo if you, like me, use a weekly tablet box. <laughs> Loads of you. Sometimes it's the only way I know what day it is. Oh, Tuesday's tablets must be fucking Tuesday. <laughs> When I collect my tablets from the chemist, they fill a shopping bag. They fill a fucking shopping bag. Now, the last time this happened, I bumped into a woman that I know. I'd call her a friend, but I wouldn't mean it. We've all got those people, haven't we? You know those people, you, you don't remember how you got them in your life, so you don't know how to get fucking rid of them. She's one of those. She's not a nice lady. She makes me feel uncomfortable. But I bumped into her. She pointed to my thankfully unmarked shopping bag, and she said, E, have you been treating yourself? And I just said, yeah, because I thought, what's the alternative? What I really want to say is, oh, no, in here are some anxiety meds that make this fucking conversation bearable. <laughs> also, if we do have any really young people in the room, a pillbox is not what you take to a nightclub. Different thing. <laughs> Although, if you are in a nightclub, it's still important to take your meds, isn't it? My thyroid's not going to start working just because I've had a hooch, is it? No. <laughs> Number six, your skin. People look at your skin when you're born, and then nothing for 40 years, and then everybody's got a fucking opinion about your skin. A friend of mine said, your skin's nice. I said, thank you. She said, can I ask a question? I said, sure. She said, do you use fillers? Now, I'm about to tell you something that you might find a little bit disappointing in me, because I said, yes, it's true. I do use fillers. They're not the traditional kind. I call them cakes and pies. <laughs> poison in your face when you could put lovely things in your mouth. I just don't understand the logic, I really don't. I do like to buy skincare. I refuse, however, to buy anything that calls itself anti-wrinkle, because I myself am not anti-wrinkle. I've got wrinkles, I'll get more, it's absolutely fine. I'm not going to spend 30 quid on something that reckons it stops fucking time. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I buy moisturiser for the same reason we all buy moisturiser, because isn't it nice to feel a little bit slippy before bedtime? <laughs> The last time I bought skincare, the website I bought it from said, because you've spent over X amount of money and to a free sample, choose one of the following things, we'll send it on. Great, I love a freebie. The one I chose, though, was purely out of curiosity because it was called Youth Serum. And I thought, what the fuck is Youth Serum? Are they going to send me the skin of a child to lie over my own? <laughs> and then I thought, what if it looks like Teddy Bear Ham? I fucking love Teddy Bear Ham. How youth are we talking? Am I going to get pulled over by the police while I'm driving my car? And they're going to go, how are you driving this? And I'm going to go, I'm 47, I'm just covered in teddy bear ham, look! <laughs> but also, youth serum to me sounds too much like teenage boys' jizz. <laughs> <laughs> Your sheets are covered in youth serum, Jamie, you dirty fucking bastard. <laughs> I imagine there's factories, just teenage lad, lined up after teenage lad, just... Cracking one out to a catalogue. <laughs> and number seven on my list of the seven signs of ageing is fuck you, it's a privilege to get old because not everybody gets the chance. <laughs> and I don't just mean people we've lost, I also mean people like Madonna, stay with me. So. <laughs> Madonna pops up on my Instagram, I always feel bad for her. Poor Madonna. Why isn't she allowed to get old? Doesn't seem fair that we're all allowed to get old and she isn't. I would like to never see Madonna again, because then I can imagine she's retired, she's clocked off. She's sitting on the sofa in like stained jogging bottoms, <laughs> watching Escape to the Country on a loop. <laughs> Maybe she pops to be in Q, treats herself to one of those garden kneeler pads. You know the garden kneeler pads? Doesn't even cross her mind she could use it for blowjobs. Doesn't even cross her mind. <laughs> Because she's retired. 
she could hang a crucifix back up on the wall instead of jamming it in a fanny like she did when I saw her at the Manchester Arena that time. I'm sure Jesus would be relieved. And he's been in some tough spots, as we know. She could reappropriate a cone bra for when people come round, turn it upside down. Crisps in one, nuts in the other. <laughs> I think it might be because she's in America. I think if she was over here, we'd treat her better. I think if she was over here, the rest of her career would pan out as follows. I think she'd do six months behind the bar at the Queen Vic. <laughs> and she'd do a regional theatre tour of calendar girls with two loose women in a Nolan. <laughs> And finally, she would fuck a professional dancer. Sorry, do Strictly. <laughs> you do, you do have to spare a thought for the people who aren't allowed to get old. I, for one, can't wait to let myself go a bit more. <laughs> but we all had to start buying stuff online, didn't we? One of the things I had to start buying online was uh, sanitary towels. Give me a woofy more of a tampon kind of gal. <laughs> yeah. Anybody like a sanitary towel? Anybody favour a moon cup? Yeah, a couple of people. I don't think my husband definitely knows what moon cups are, because I mentioned them to him, and he went, mooncup.com. <laughs> it's not a really clever way they found if you've been able to send some menstrual blood to your Auntie Jenny for her birthday. <laughs> oh, look, it says you can personalise it. Let's write Jenny in all the clots. <laughs> We're loyal to brands that we like. I could spot the kind of sanitary towel I've always used at a hundred yards in a super drug. That's the sort of test you should be doing at the fucking optician. I'd have nailed that. <laughs> do I know what they're called when I have to type them into a computer? Do I shite? <laughs> I went on the Boots app and I thought, how many different kinds of sanitary towels can there possibly be? Turns out, a bazillion. <laughs> and they all have sort of key words on them, like discreet. Sensitive, pro-fresh, instant dry, and long. And I thought, yes, I'll have all of those things, please. <laughs> Turns out it's very much an either-or situation. I thought, who is choosing between these things? Would you like them to be discreet? No, I don't mind if people can tell. <laughs> Would you like them to be sensitive? No, I don't mind if me fanny's red raw. <laughs> Would you like them to be pro-fresh? No, I don't mind if I smell of roadkill. <laughs> Would you like them to be instant dry? No, I prefer to be always wet. <laughs> I like to feel like I've either just pissed myself or I'm super turned on. <laughs> Would you like them to be long? No, as long as it covers the spout. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> One thing I didn't know is that sanitary towels are now sized, and I don't mean the size of the pad itself, I mean the size of the person wearing it. And I thought, oh my God, we as women get judged on so many different things. And now, I'm about to be judged on the size of me twat. <laughs> it's a matter of time before Grazia is telling us what size twat is fashionable next spring. <laughs> well, there is good news for the fatties amongst us because it is based solely on the size of your thigh gap. 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 <laughs> what fucking gap? <laughs> barely got a knee gap. <laughs> Although there was a moment fairly recently when I thought I might actually have a thigh gap. I walked past a mirror in brown knickers and there was a chink of light between my thighs and I thought, fucking hell, I have got a thigh gap. On closer inspection, it was a bit of silver foil of a two-stick kick pack. <laughs> my thighs are flush against each other as suspected. I once caught a fork between my thighs in a restaurant. <laughs> I think whatever you've got down there, you shouldn't be judged on the size of it. That's not fair, is it? Haven't said that. You know how men with big dicks give us a cheer? No, don't. Don't. <laughs> you know how men with big dicks sometimes use lube? Do men with small dicks use chalk? <laughs> it's a good question, isn't it? 
a man the other day said, no, talc. <laughs> Genuinely wasn't expecting somebody to answer. And also, talc has a different image to me, because talc's like that. Which, why am I thinking chalk like a fucking snooker cue? <laughs> Blow on that, will you, love, before we get cracking, just blow on it. <laughs> but I always get annoyed by my period. I've had my period for over 30 years. I've never wanted children, not a moment, not a flicker. I'm sure a lot of you have got kids and you're having a great time with them, and that's smashing for you. It's not for me. It's not for me at all. The best way I can describe how annoyed I get every time my period starts is like this. Imagine you've got a friend at work. She's called Deborah. She's great. Deborah's got a rabbit hutch. And every month she cleans it out. Puts fresh bedding in, fresh water in the water bottle, fresh food in the food bottle. Looks spotless, amazing, spick and span. And he said to her, Deborah, are you ever going to get a rabbit? <laughs> and she goes, nah, I fucking hate them. That's what periods are to me. I feel like I'm making up the guest bedroom for a visitor that will ruin my fucking life. <laughs> Enjoy your new baby, madam. <laughs> I do also have very heavy periods. Uh, not today, not any danger in the front row there. Who <laughs> wouldn't do that to you? <laughs> do have very heavy periods. You know the old saying, it's like trying to get blood out of a stone. I think they should update that. <laughs> I think it now should be E. It's like trying to get blood out of a mattress topper. <laughs> in a hotel. <laughs> to my very heavy periods. I feel like at the beginning of my period, it's quite tricky to explain this, at the beginning of my period, it's a little bit like my arse is in competition. <laughs> well, some of you already know what I mean. That's good, that's helpful. It's a little bit like my arse is going, oh, are we having a big clear out? <laughs> I'll have a big clear out as well, if that's all right. <laughs> could shock me. Nothing could shock me. If I turn around and look down that toilet, there was a dead rat just floating. <laughs> I'd be like, sure, makes sense. The cast of The Walking Dead just climbing out. <laughs> the girl off the ring popping up over the side. Sometimes I look down that toilet, looks like the first 20 minutes of saving Private Ryan. <laughs> I did say there would be some upsetting scenes. <laughs> I feel like the, um, the pre-sex routine, the preparation before sex, if you like, is very different for men as it is for women. For example, the first thing I do is I put my sex glasses on. <laughs> They're very focals. <laughs> so I can see what's going on, what's coming. <laughs> Maybe you try an activity. A friend of mine told me her and her partner tried a bit of role play where they pretended they'd never met before to make it a bit sexier. We've done a version of that. We sometimes pretend we're people who aren't tired. <laughs> and he pretends I'm a woman who shaved her legs. <laughs> I spend proper time on the preparation, though, proper time. One of the first things I do is I hack it back. <laughs> Some of you know what I mean. Some of you aren't so sure. If you're not sure what I mean, I'm sure you've seen a nature documentary where somebody has to clear a path with a machete. <laughs> But like that. Can't always see what I'm doing down there. There's lots of boobs and bellies in the way. Sometimes I set up a complicated system of mirrors. <laughs> Most I just do it by feel. And they say childbirth is painful, and I'm sure it is, but it can't be as bad as nipping a lip in your craft scissors. <laughs> Whenever I trim the fat off bacon, I get flashbacks. <laughs> I don't trim the fat off bacon. <laughs> I treat my pre-sex routine like I'm trying to sell a house. Clear away excess foliage, Febreze the soft furnishings. <laughs> Familiar bread smell, yeast. <laughs> it's different for blokes though, isn't it? 
in my limited experience, uh, straight men just wash their cocks, that's it. It's then just, <laughs> not even always all of it, sometimes just the end part. <laughs> of course, some of them have to wash all the chalk off. Ah. <laughs> and I said to my husband, I said, horses do more than you. He said, what? I said, horses do more than you. It's true, I've got a friend, she's got a horse. Her horse has a special lady who comes out just to wash his knob. <laughs> I mean, how do you get into that? <laughs> And by that, I don't mean, how do you get into that? <laughs> also, how at the end of your tether as a careers advisor are you before you slam shut your folder and go, how are you a horse's cocks? <laughs> it's done for medical reasons, it's done for health reasons. They do it because they have to clear out what are called smeg beans. <laughs> Which are exactly what you think they are. But don't they also sound a little bit like something you could get from Ikea? <laughs> I only went in for a nest of tables, came out with a massive bag of smeg beans. <laughs> I was trying to explain to my husband what they were and I sort of nervously Googled it. You know, Google has a habit of finishing the rest of the search for you. And I typed in smeg beans and Google went, smeg beans grinder. And I was like, how bad are they? <laughs> that you have to grind them off. And then I realised it's a posh coffee machine, isn't it? <laughs> smeg beans grinder. Oh. Also explains why John Lewis had it in four different colours. <laughs> when I had, uh, had a smear test before the first lockdown, uh, not like my friend had to have one during the lockdown. She had awful trouble getting her fanny at the right angle for the Zoom meeting. <laughs> and she had, as she told me, she'd let herself flourish down there. That's her words, not mine. She'd let herself flourish. She said in order for them to see anything at all, she had to use a couple of scrunchies. <laughs> I was very lucky. I had mine before the first lockdown. Give me a woo if you've had a smear test in the last three years. Yeah. We're all very proud of ourselves, as should be. It's very important. I made an appointment at the doctors, went along to the doctor's surgery, went into the nurse's room, she pulled the curtain round, told me to get undressed. All very normal so far. I took off my trainers, my socks, my jeans, my knickers. There was a flicker of a second where I forgot where I was. I was quite tired that day. And I also took off my top and my bra. <laughs> and I thought, I'm going to have to really quickly put these back on again. Or she's going to whip this curtain back and think it's a date. <laughs> but as I was putting my top and my bra back on, she shouted over the top of the curtain, what size speculum are you? And I thought, am I supposed to know that? I've got a horrible feeling it's one of my security questions at the bank. <laughs> so I never know the answers to them either. And I think we're all fairly worldly wise in this room here tonight, but if anybody genuinely doesn't know what a speculum is, the best way I could describe it to you, it's basically a car jack, but for fannies. <laughs> that bit. It's not the bit with the going with a spoon. It's not a spoon, is it? She asked me what size spoon I was. I'd be like, I'd like to think a table, but I've got a horrible feeling I'm a little. <laughs> I didn't know what size speculum I was. I texted my husband because I thought, he's been down there a bit, he might have an idea. He just sent back a picture of three of his fingers. <laughs> Two if you're a Polish handyman. <laughs> but after the smear test was over, I went into the reception area. The lady at reception, as soon as she saw me approach, she said, well done. And I thought that was lovely. And I said as much. I said, thanks so much for saying that. I said, we all worry about these appointments, but they're over in seconds. They're only really a bit uncomfortable and they're so important. But I said, I was worried about it, but I'm glad I've been. Thank you so much for saying that. It means a lot to me. She said, what do you think I said? <laughs> I said, you said, well done. She said, I said, all done. Ah, shit! <laughs> so I picked up my lolly and my sticker and I fucked off. <laughs> Actually, while I'm on this kind of subject, I've got something to tell you. There's no comedy here. I need to tell you this, though. I went for a mammogram. It was my first one. It was routine. It was all clear. The lady said to me, did you find that it hurt very much? And I said, no, it was just a bit uncomfortable, really. She said, people always think that it hurts a lot and it stops them from coming and it's so important that people come and get checked and get checked early. She said, could you do me a favour and could you tell your friends? And I got home that night and I thought, I think I can go one better than that and I can tell all of the glorious women in my audiences every single night on tour to get your tits checked, please. <laughs> no joke, just a fact. 
pas, t'as pas, c'est ce qu'elle est toute. But we all gained weight in the last few years, yes? Yes. Yeah. I uh, decided to try and lose a bit of weight, just the weight I gained in the lockdown, that was my plan. And most people, when they decide to lose weight, there's something that starts them off, spurs them on, kind of keeps them going. Maybe there's a holiday photo and they don't quite like how they look in it. Or maybe they're sitting in a bath of gravy and it's not even for children in need. <laughs> For me, it was when I sat on a public toilet and the sunny bin opened and I hadn't asked it to. Did you want me? <laughs> no, but my arse cheeks seemed to disagree. <laughs> but I tried really hard, I tried really hard and I lost two stone. That's all right, isn't it? I lost two stone, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's very pain to do, thank you. I said two stone, it was the same half a stone four different times. <laughs> Nobody gives a shit if you tell them you've lost half a stone. Everybody knows it's just two big dinners and a chocolate orange and the fuck is back on again, isn't it? <laughs> but I've always had a belly, even though I was much, much slim, I've always had a belly. I always get offended when people think that this is pregnant, like I would ever let a pregnancy get this far. No! <laughs> but I did a thing the January before last, that I think a lot of people do, especially in January, I downloaded a diet app. Now, the phone I was using at the time was a thumb recognition phone. It didn't immediately recognise my thumb, it just kept juddering. And first of all, I thought my phone was just really clever, and it was like, it's a diet app, we've clearly been stolen. <laughs> and then I looked at my thumb and it was just covered in biscuit. <laughs> so I licked the biscuit off, so I thought it might be my last biscuit in a while, and I downloaded the diet app. What came with the diet app was a WhatsApp group of other participants. It was open to all, but my group happened to be all women. And it was so we could support each other and help each other. Everybody knows diets are hard and a bit shit. Also in the WhatsApp group was a nutritionist who was no fun at all, it transpired. <laughs> one of the women in the group asked a question of the rest of us, a perfectly reasonable question, especially on day one of a new diet. She said, I'm having trouble with my sweet craving. Can anybody recommend something that isn't bad for me but will help? And one of the other women responded almost immediately, and she said, I usually find a mug of hot water with one small drop of lemon works for me. And I just thought, I'm not going to make it to the end of the week. <laughs> My suggestion was going to be half a Twix. <laughs> and the nutritionist, she was called Poppy. Of course she fucking was. <laughs> she said, can I just chip in? And I misread it, and I was like, chips, hooray, nom, nom, nom. <laughs> She said, just brush your teeth, that fixes everything. And I thought, that's so unhelpful. The only thing that would help is hunger if I could eat me fucking toothbrush because I'm so hungry right now. <laughs> you daft cow. <laughs> mm, cows. Um, 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 um. <laughs> there were some recipes that came with the diet. I tried one of them. It was how to make banana pancakes out of almost no ingredients. First time I tried them, just looked like vomit in a pan. Second time, managed to make them look a lot more like pancakes. And I was so excited and a little bit lightheaded from all of the hunger that when I ran from the kitchen to show my husband, I tripped and the plate smashed on the floor. But because it was a really low point in the diet for me, let's call it day two, <laughs> I ate them off the floor. <laughs> and I had to check to see if the fragments of plate and cat hair I'd also ingested counted as my sins for the week. <laughs> One of the women in the group got told off, told off as an adult, got told off for eating goji berries. If you've never had goji berries, it's like chewing elastic bands. <laughs> she got told off because goji berries are full of natural sugar, not really allowed on this plan. She wasn't having coke or pops with cider poured on. <laughs> she was having goji berries on her bran flakes. Some sad sprinkled on some more fucking sad. <laughs> I got told if I called it a diet. What I actually said was, I fucking hate this diet. We don't like to call it a diet. We prefer to call it a way of life. So I said, I fucking hate this way of life. <laughs> she was right, though, because it was also my way of life from the 3rd to the 5th of January. <laughs> I started to ask questions. You got a nutritionist at your fingertips? Why don't you try and learn something? I said, I've got some questions for you, Poppy. Is that OK? She said, fire away anything you like. I said, I've had a cherry. Now, I thought it was OK because it's fruit, but now I'm not so sure it was on top of a bakewell. Is that OK? <laughs> I've had an apple. An apple's full of natural sugar as well. It was surrounded by something called, what was it called? Crumble. Is that all right? <laughs> I've had a banana. A banana's allowed. I mean, I ate it out of a strip as crotch. Is that all right? <laughs> she said that was fine. <laughs> The next thing, it was covered in cream. I think it was cream. I couldn't be sure. It was dark. <laughs> 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 but 
But the final straw for me on uh, my last day on the diet, or day three, uh, was when Poppy came on the WhatsApp group and she said, hey, girls, she always pissed me off because all women in her 40s and 50s, fuck off with your girls. Hey, girls, can I just check if you all definitely challenged yourselves this week? And I was the first to respond. I said, I've challenged myself, Poppy. She said, oh, good, please share it with the group. I said, gladly. I said, I challenged myself. I said, I walked into Asda. I went to the whoops section. I found two Belgian buns that had to be eaten by midnight. And I fucking did it. <laughs> I was going to say, and I'd do it again, but I have several times over since then. I've got a friend who's got really nice hands, and people often compliment her on her hands, and they say things like, haven't you got piano player fingers? Which I think is such a weird thing to say to somebody. Nobody ever looks at my hands and says, haven't you got tuba player fingers? <laughs> Do you play the sausages? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> the only instrument I've ever been able to play is the recorder. Give us a word if you learned the recorder as a kid. <laughs> I like the idea of the recorder because I think it's meant to be so simple you can decide if you want to pursue other instruments off the back of it or not. Can anybody shout at any of the songs that they learnt on their recorder? <laughs> London's Burning, Frere Jacques, what else? <laughs> Three Blind Mice, Lincoln, Little Donkey. There was a lady the other day shout out, Handel's Water Music. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fucking Cambridge. <laughs> I would like to say thank you to you glorious people for coming and spending your evening with me by playing some of those songs that you just shouted out. Now, slight problem, and I am genuinely embarrassed by this. I'm putting it down to the fact that I just had a break off tour, not quite back in the swing of things, but I forgot to bring my recorder. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm a professional. I'm going to see if I can just busk it without. <laughs> so I heard Freire Jacques at the back there. Let's start with that one. Um, ooh, 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 ooh. That's all right. I'll do one then. Will I do yeah. Uh, we had a London's burning round the front as well. Let's do that one. I think my favourite one will always be Three Blind Mice because I think it's the easiest. I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> it's quite easy, isn't it? It's just a bit higher. Same line again. <laughs> Fucking hell, that got hard very quickly. <laughs> People right at the back upstairs are like, there's no way she hasn't got a recorder. This sounds amazing. <laughs> I, was in, uh, I was in Australia a few years ago, on my way back from Melbourne, in quite a fancy airport lounge. And I went to the ladies' loos, which were spotless and silent. And I was an IBS sufferer. <laughs> a silent toilet is not my friend. I'm seriously considering employing a man and a trumpet to just follow me round. <laughs> Spotless and silent, I took from that, at least there's nobody else in, and I did what can only be described as thunderous diarrhoea. <laughs> the sort of shit you need a breather afterwards. <laughs> which is exactly what I did. I sat back, some would say slumped, against the toilet like it was a fucking armchair. <laughs> and that's when I heard, is everything okay? <laughs> long enough to realise she was on her phone. Can you imagine if I'd replied? <laughs> oh, I've just pebble dashed, but I've got wet wipes. Don't worry about me. <laughs> but it reminded me of a time when I was in the car with my sister. She was driving. I was in the passenger seat. She asked me a question. While I was thinking of my response, I farted. <laughs> because I have no thigh gap. It really has to force its way through. <laughs> it essentially sort of quacked its way to freedom. <laughs> Exactly, and I don't know what she thinks I answered. <laughs> Got one more thing to tell you, but before I do, I just want to say thank you. I fucking love doing my job, and it's been an absolute pleasure to do it for you guys tonight. I'm so glad that you came and were here for this recording. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
I tried in the, in the lockdown, I think a lot of people were doing this, to eat a bit more healthily. I was trying occasionally to make vegetables a bit more interesting. And what I did, I bought myself a mandolin. Now, to avoid the confusion, I do mean the vegetable slicer, not the musical instrument. <laughs> I wasn't thinking, you know what, we'll jazz these carrots up. <laughs> Somebody's playing a lovely tune behind me in the kitchen. The vegetable slicer, you will have seen them. I ordered it, it arrived. I threw away the instructions, how hard can it be? I also genuinely threw away something called a finger protector. <laughs> Turns out that bit was quite important. And I sliced the top of my finger off. I took it in a bag of ice to the hospital. That's what they do in the films, isn't it? Took it in a bag of ice to the hospital. It was perched on a slice of courgette. <laughs> like a small pink frog on a lily pad. <laughs> I handed it to the lovely nurse in a and &E. She took it off me, she looked puzzled. I thought she's trying to work out whether or not we can reattach my finger end. She studied it for way too long. Then she turned back to me, she still looked puzzled. And she went, what were you having for your tea? That was her confusion. <laughs> and then she just dropped it in the bin. I said, are we not reattaching it? She said, no, it'll grow back. And I didn't believe her, but it has, it's my middle finger. It's not even a weird chip. I mean, it grew back, how fucking Wolverine is that, eh? <laughs> I mean, I was trying to lose weight, just not fucking chunk by chunk. <laughs> the only way I know it's not 100% normal is that it's a little bit too sensitive and it's a little bit too tingly. For a while, I thought my clitoris had moved. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Ah. You guys have been amazing. Thank you so much for coming. Lots of love.